So you've got your shiny new BBC Model B off uh, eBay or wherever, uh, dug it out of the loft and you've plugged it in and 10 minutes later there's a bit of a crackly sound and a uh, pop and a puff of acrid smoke uh, comes out of the uh, rear left hand corner of the machine um, which actually will probably still keep carry on uh, working. What do you do? Well this is a quick video on how to replace the likely faulty filter capacitors in your uh, power supply. So uh, first of all you'll need to remove the uh, four screws that hold on the lid. Uh, these are here, here, and underneath, here, here, and at the same time I would uh, take the opportunity to remove these three screws, one there, one there and one there. These actually hold the power supply in. You won't be able to remove it at this stage but uh, uh, worthwhile uh, undoing those now. So uh, once you've removed those four screws the lid of the thing will simply uh, remove like so to reveal the innards and the power supply is uh, this little chap in the uh, rear left corner. Uh, best thing is before you remove anything is to take a picture to uh, see uh, where the uh, power leads go. They are actually marked on a PCB. VCC is plus 5 volts, 0 volts obviously 0 volts. Uh, depending on the age of your power supply is either a purple, uh, in this case it's purple, or a uh, brown uh, lead down here which is minus 5 volts. Um, and it plugs on in uh, one, two, three areas of the motherboard. Uh, make sure you're all grounded before you start removing these. Uh, this bank of chips over here is the RAM uh, and doesn't uh, react kindly to uh, um, uh, static. To uh, get the power supply out uh, you'll need to uh, loosen the keyboard. This is held by a couple of nuts, one here uh, and one at this side that go through to the exterior of the machine uh, and once those two are off the whole keyboard can be uh, eased forwards uh, and the uh, power supply will then just lift up. Bear in mind the cable will still uh, go in through the back and believe it or not the plug, if you've still got the moulded plug on the end, uh, will fit through that hole with a little bit of wiggling and jiggling. Uh, just worth noting if um, you've still got the moulded plug on uh, and kids are going to be using the computer, it might be a worthwhile a task just to replace this with uh, one of the more modern plugs with sleeved pins. You need a 3 amp fuse, of course. Um, if I assume you're competent to fit a plug if you're going to be playing around with a switch mode power supply on your computer. Uh, once it's out, um, you'll end up with something like this. Uh, as you can see, in my case, this. Uh, is a capacitor that has ruptured and made the uh, stink which for reference is in here the uh, other one uh, tucked under here is still intact and uh, in fact capacitor C9 is also good which is there we'll check that with an ESR meter uh, later first job is to uh, release this cable tie there we go that's better and then turn our attention to the uh, mains inlet. You have to remove the uh, earthing here and uh, disconnect the uh, switch. Um, the connections to which are really rather stiff, so you might need a flat blade screwdriver or something to, uh, to help you. So that's the um, earths disconnected. So that's the uh, switch disconnected, bear in mind the line is uh, toward the uh, capacitor side, so laterally towards the edge of the, uh, towards the power supply. So these two connectors here are line. This is the one that goes on the uh, board and this is the one brown that goes to your um, mains cable. Similarly on the other side, neutral is on the top and the black uh, neutral that goes to the board is at the bottom, just for um, reminding you. Next we need to uh, turn our attention to the auxiliary. Um, again, basically they're a little uh, plastic 
um, spring-loaded clips which you have to squeeze and hold in and then force the whole thing to, to go in this way. It's a tight squeeze but we'll have a little fiddle with it and see what we can do. So you can see there the two plastic clips at the top have been pushed in uh, and the uh, connector pushed in slightly. We have to do the same thing with these uh, bottom two and then the uh, power connector will slide within the uh, power supply casing. And with a little wiggling it will come past this uh, green uh, capacitor here. So we'll just pull it, pull it out. And there you go. There's one more earth uh, to connection to go, which is uh, here. Remove that, then the um, uh, board should be free to come out once we've removed the uh, mounting screws. Uh, one there, one in here, and one over there at the far corner. So that's the uh, earth connection removed. The auxiliary uh, power connector is uh, free and the uh, three screws that hold down the PCB have been removed so that's all nice and mobile. You find the PCB won't slide out uh, past the power switch here. So again same process as with the um, AUX power connector. There are four little uh, plastic legs which you squeeze in and then the uh, switch will come out. Uh, the back of the uh, power supply and that will enable you to slide out the PCB. So there we have it, the uh, switch here is removed. Um, make a note of which way up it was, it's actually the, uh, on this one the copper um, contacts are as we look at this power supply downwards and the PCB should simply uh, slide out. Make sure you've uh, retrieved all the screws. Uh, these are the uh, ones that hold the PCB down. They all have a little washer on them. But don't leave that rattling around the power supply or you'll have trouble. And some of the, uh, the earth uh, bolts, again, they have a little spring washer as well. Make sure it's all accounted for. The power supply has a sort of mica sheet, uh, uh, again, which you can uh, remove or can be di become displaced. So again, make sure that's uh, um, in position just before reassembly. So looking at the PCB, there's some big capacitors on here. If you've only just had your um, uh, problem, uh, it's worth shorting all these out with an insulated screwdriver just to make sure there's no residual uh, charge left in them and you don't get a nasty uh, shock. So uh, just uh, shorting across these to make sure they're all okay shorting across there. Okay, so no problems. So from above we can see uh, which capacitors are to be uh, swapped out. Uh, C1, C2 and uh, C9 which is this electrolytic in here. Um, gets hot in here and the electrolyte will dry out on this chap here so worth, uh, worth changing it. Uh, easiest thing to do to desolder is work out which of these connections relates to which of the capacitors. Draw a little, um, use a uh, sharpie or something to mark them, then use a desoldering sucker um, to uh, remove the solder and uh, then uh, push the component out. So doing something like this will uh, help you uh, to desolder the right uh, connections. Bear in mind of course the um, uh, C1 and C2 are not polarised but C9 is so you have to get your new capacitor in the right way uh, and the, one of the easy ways to do this I've found is to um, find the uh, white stripe I don't know if you can see uh, there just put a little uh, black blob on the uh, PCB uh, level with the, uh, the negative leg and then when you uh, have desoldered that uh, you'll find that you've still got a reference for the reasons you don't put it in the wrong way around or it will explode so I always find a little bit of uh, new um, tin lead uh, solder onto the uh, connection first and then simply use a solder sucking device like this uh, once it's uh, molten to uh, remove the solder 
uh, and uh, gently uh, push the component out. Uh, so that's the uh, component removed. This is, here it says C1, which is a uh, 0 0.01 microfarad, um, 250 volts rated uh, filter cap. This one hasn't gone bang, but the uh, capacitor C2 has, so I'm going to replace all of them. So this is the uh, replacement, good quality uh, capacitor. Uh, 10 nanofarads again, X2, and this is rated 275 volts AC, and we'll just install that, and then do uh, C2. So this is the uh, capacitor to handgun bang, C2. Um, this is uh, 0.1 microfarads, uh, and uh, as you can see there, it's all uh, split and discharged, it's sort of nasty smelling brown stuff. Uh, so we'll uh, put in the replacement. Which I have here again reasonable make um, again 100 nanofarads same as 0.1 microfarad 275 volts AC rated uh, just a matter of interest let's uh, check uh, C9 when I've uh, when I've removed so actually not too bad uh, 231.6 microfarads um, ESR 0.13 ohms, let's check it against a new one. So uh, this is a new one. Okay, so a little less capacitance, uh, but uh, uh, much lower uh, series resistance. Here we can see the uh, PCB underneath C9 is actually marked for polarity to help you uh, get the uh, c components in the right way around. Just uh, snug this down now so that the capacitor is uh, flush with the board and uh, solder it in and then we are done. Just need to uh, reassemble. So this is what it looks like once done. Uh, cleaned off the pen uh, and then on the other side we've got our uh, new uh, shiny new capacitors and uh, C9 is also down there. Uh, snug down the right orientation. Uh, we'll just uh, pop it back in its case, make sure the earth cables are all done up with their star washers in the right place and uh, pop it back in the machine and all should be well. I hope uh, you find this uh, video uh, useful uh, as always uh, thanks for watching.